The Delore Factor is sponsored by Ladira, a romantic paradise. Lime, value every moment. Illuminous, your transformation begins here. Rituals, grounds for enjoyment. And supported by the Cultural Development Foundation, Creativity, Culture, Community. My guest today is originally from Antigua, but has lived in St. Lucia most of her life. When she was 12 years old, her father bought her a guitar for $40, but using it has brought her and the people around her more memories than money could ever buy. My guest says being a musician is a blessing because she brings happiness to those who listen and she feels joy when people tell her how happy her music makes them. When you talk to her, you realise it's not only her music that makes her different, but the way she views life. Her views on love, religion, spirituality and oppression makes complete sense. But the way she says it makes you think, why didn't I see it that way before? Then she might say something that makes you ask why. And here's a quote. Religion is just black or white. There's no gray area, unquote. Really, why? I admire her love for music. She says music is an expression of love. I give out love and receive love when I make music. Stay with us on The Delore Factor as we explore musical expression through words and music with my guest Claudette Ajuda. As an entertainer, I have seen many wonderful places around the world, but my favourite is Ladera Resort. Ladera is my favourite place to be, but the reasons why are difficult to put into words. Ladera itself is a mystical place that stimulates unforgettable memories in a setting that awakens your passion for nature and evokes romance. This is a place for rest and relaxation, recreation and even recreation. I usually go to Ladera for a brief escape from the everyday but I always leave revitalized and inspired. If you ever imagine what it is like in heaven, I believe you will get a glimpse of it at Ladera Resort. Ladera. There is nowhere else quite like it. Welcome to Paradise Ridge here at Ladera Resort in Sufra, St. Lucia. It's beautiful, isn't it? We'll show you more of that as time goes on. But first, I want to introduce you to my guest. I've seen her in St. Lucia for many, many years. I even know her family and I didn't realize until recently that I did. I'm so happy to introduce to you Claudette Ajuda. Claudette, welcome to The Delore Factor. Thank you for having me, Delia. You were shocked when I asked you. Yes, I asked you why. Yes, well, why did you <laughs> ask that? <laughs> it's not often that I'm asked to do stuff like this. You know, you know why? It's because people don't truly appreciate you the way that I do and the people of Sufren do, uh, which is why we want the whole of the Caribbean to know the things that you do and the type of person that you are. Are you okay with that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Claudia, I know many people think that you are from St. Lucia because we've seen you here for many years. But in fact, you're not from St. Lucia, are you? No, I'm originally from Antigua. Mm -hmm. um, I came to St. Lucia at the end of 78, 1978, and I've been here ever since. You know, okay. it's more than half my life, so. Wow, so before I even ask you about how you got to St. Lucia, what are your family roots like can you tell us a little, a little about your parents and how you were brought up and I'm assuming in, an, in Antigua? Yes I was brought mm -hmm. up in Antigua. Um, my mom is Antiguan born, my dad is from Lebanon so my roots are I'm Lebanese, African actually because the Middle East was part of Africa at one time and um, I have one brother one sister and I grew up you know very strict um, upbringing in Antigua. I left Antigua at 14 to go to boarding school in Canada. And then I did um, two years boarding school, went to university, 
got married to St. Lucian and ended up in St. Lucia. Oh, that's <laughs> how that happened. Yes. But how, how is it from Antigua to Canada? Was that a family change? No, I was, the thing is, I sat my GC at 14. And in those days, in 1969, there was no A-level, right? So one of my uncles helped my dad to send me to school with his daughter. Mm -hmm. I did two years boarding school and then I went to university. Mm -hmm. Are your parents uh, and all your siblings still alive? No, my mom and dad died, have died recently, and but my brother and my sister are alive. My sister has her own secondary school in Antigua, St. Anthony Secondary School, and my brother is in Canada. And what's your sister's name? Joanne. And your parents' names? Leonel and Marie. I'm sorry to hear that you lost them recently, but you, you, you're such a positive person. Something tells me that you remember the good memories. And, and I carry them in my heart, so they're always with me, right? Is, <laughs> is there a song coming about, <laughs> about <laughs> that feeling? Because oh, I know a lot of life things inspires you. Um, at any time, when you think of your parents, what are the things that you think about? Love, because that was how we were raised. And my mom had an amazing voice. And my dad bought me my first guitar. I was a little girl. How did that come about? I just told him, Daddy, I want to learn to play the guitar. And he looked at me and he went out and he bought me uh, a guitar. And mommy was always singing and we always had music at home. So there was a Peace Corps who actually taught me my first three chords. And I took it from there. And every time I sing, before I sing, I give thanks to mommy for the beautiful voice and I give thanks to daddy for the guitar. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. <laughs> and, then, and I love the way you but say mommy and true. daddy. <laughs> no, you know, because I, I think that nowadays we lose, especially when we come out of the Caribbean more so, we lose those lovely terms of endowment that we talk when we talk about our parents. It's not mommy and daddy, it's mom or dad or whatever mm, terms yeah. they want to use, but mommy and daddy, it's, I think it's such a loving, such a beautiful way to Yeah, because they your were absolutely amazing people. Mm -hmm. um, they were super. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just you know, when you first said, well, you know, your daddy <laughs> just went out and bought you the, the guitar, I thought, that's a bit strange because Very. in, you know, typically, especially when it comes to creativity, uh, families or parents, especially in those days, mm -hmm. it was frowned upon in terms of, well, you, you can't really have it for recreation because it's not something that a child does. And you can't really have it for education because you're not going to make any money out of it. Mm -hmm. So when you say that your parents just, your dad just went out. Actually, he put up more of a fuss when I told him I wanted to become a teacher. Because he always said, there's no money in teaching. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but still, he never stopped. My dad always taught us. When you have a decision to make in life, you look at the advantages, you look at the disadvantages. You make your decision based on that. If, you, if the disadvantages outweigh the advantages and you still choose you know, to go that way, mm -hmm. then you face the responsibility. You know? And he always taught us to follow our heart, but live honestly. Did you, was your father uh, from an area, because you know, in those days there was still uh, turbulence wars and things like that happening uh, still things aren't really really settled in that part of the world did he ever tell you uh, about any stories or any lessons that he learned uh, that he was maybe away from it and that we should maybe you should be grateful for living in a peaceful place like Antigua well he when he came to he left Lebanon um, I guess around 1954 mm -hmm. and he came to Guadeloupe actually and that's where he met my mom because she had sisters who lived in Guadeloupe and, you know, they fell in love and whatever and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. got married and stuff. But he never really talked about when he was growing up, but he was always listening to the news and stuff when, you know, when things happened in, in Lebanon. Actually, he was in Lebanon when a particular, the war broke out because mm -hmm. he went over there with, um, at the time, Prime Minister Walter from Antigua took him to the Middle East as his interpreter because okay. Daddy could speak Arabic and French mm -hmm. and English fluently. Mm -hmm. But he never really talked about it, but he gave us books to read. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we learned from that. Khalil Gibran was his, his mentor, you know. Mm -hmm. And we, we grew up on Khalil Gibran's words, actually. And it's uh, something that you have now 
uh, transformed or moved over to your children? Because mm -hmm. surprise, surprise, <laughs> it's Alicia. Yes, Claudette has children. So tell us, tell us uh, about your children. You have two daughters, right? Yes, Cherise and Jana. I, I've been privileged to meet uh, Cherise many, many years ago. And she told me that you her mum was like, okay. Yes. Most people react that way. Yeah, yeah. Most people react that way when they find out that I do have children. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why people think I'm childless, but mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I, I don't walk around looking worried, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sad. But my, my, you my careful, girls you are know blessings. You say there, you know? No, be well. Because <laughs> now everyone else is going to say, oh, well, does it, you know, I mean, it, is it because I have children that oh, I'm no. miserable? But no, Delia, I my girls are two blessings. Yes. I could not ask for anything better from them. They are like two amazing girls. They didn't become mm -hmm. lawyers and doctors. Mm -hmm. And um, I never encouraged them to be anything or anybody. I just told them, look, do what you want to do. I guided, I supported, mm -hmm. and that was it. They made their choices mm -hmm. and you for their careers. Some of the teachings of your parents? I Always, yes. Live honestly and follow your heart. Mm -hmm. You can do anything, be anything, and have anything. Just believe in yourself. And I think that that's <laughs> not something that you say just to your, your family and your siblings, because um, when we come back from the break, we'll begin to talk about some of the things that um, Claudette is known for in St. Lucia and also some wonderful performances. So make sure you stay here on The Delore Factor. <laughs> you like to win lunch for two at Dashin restaurant at the Ladera Resort in Soufre? Well, all you have to do is give us the name and the reason why you think someone else should win it. That's right, not you, someone else. Why do you think someone else deserves a romantic lunch for two at Dashin? Send us their name and the reason why. Giveaways at DeloreFactor.com. The deadline is the 1st of February and we'll tell you who won on the 5th of February. Good luck. <laughs> 